This video is going to take a look at how we can test two variances by conducting a hypothesis test to compare if there's a difference between the two. But before we do, we have to talk about the F distribution. The F distribution, similar to the chi-squared distribution, is skewed right with a minimum of zero and a maximum of infinity. And it also has its shape determined by the degrees of freedom, but what makes it different is we'll have two degrees of freedom. The F in the F distribution stands for fraction. We will have a degrees of freedom for the numerator of the fraction and a degrees of freedom for the denominator of the fraction. And as the graphic here at the right illustrates, based on the number of degrees of freedom, it can greatly change the shape of that graph. Now in this video, we're interested in comparing two variances. We want to see if they're the same as each other or if one is greater than the other variance. We'll have two groups that we're comparing their variances from, and each group will have its own degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom of the numerator are the sample size of the first group, minus 1, and the degrees of freedom of the denominator is the sample size of the second group, minus 1. The way we calculate our test statistic is we'll take the variance of the first group divided by the variance of the second group. Again, we have to be careful to decide whether or not we have the variance or the standard deviation. If we have the standard deviation, we need to square it to get the variance. But if we have the variance, it's already been squared, and so we don't need to square it again. Once we have our test statistic, we can use Excel to find the p-value to make our conclusion in the hypothesis test. Depending if we have a left tail or right tail test, the command in Excel is slightly different. And we'll take a look at how we can use this command in our example. But we will say equals f dot dist. And if it's a left tail test, we'll type in the value, the degrees of freedom for the numerator, the degrees of freedom for the denominator, and then we'll always say true. If it's a right tail test, we don't need to put the true at the end, and we'll put dot rt before the first parentheses. Let's take a look at this example. It has been claimed that prehistoric Native American pipe bowls made out of clay have a greater variance in their diameter than those made out of stone. To test this claim at the 0.05 level of confidence, a sample of 11 clay pipe bowls is found to have a variance of 2.266 centimeters, while a sample of 9 stone pipe bowls is found to have a variance of 0.504 centimeters can we conclude that this claim is true? As always, with our null hypothesis, we're looking for equality. We're claiming that the variance of the clay, so I'll use a subscript of C, is equal to the variance of those made out of stone. So I'll do sigma squared sub S. The alternative hypothesis is what we're trying to prove, that the clay is greater than the stone. So the variance of the clay is greater than the variance of the stone. If we were to draw a picture of this situation, we're looking for the clay to be greater. We're looking at the right tail of this test. So to calculate our F statistic, We'll take the variance of the first group, and the first group is always the one that comes first in the hypothesis test. So the variance of the clay is 2.266, divided by the variance of the second group, the stone, is 0.504. Notice we did not have to square it in this example because we already have the variance. The variance has already been squared. If we were given the standard deviation, we would have to square it, but not when we're given the variance. When we divide these, we're going to end up with 4 point, when I rounded two decimal points, 5, 0. Now, before we go to Excel, we need to know the degrees of freedom in the numerator. That's the top group, the first group. In that first sample, there were 11 bowls, one less than that, so the degrees of freedom of the numerator is 10, while the degrees of freedom for the denominator 
The second group had nine stone pipe bowls. When we subtract one, we get eight. So the degrees of freedom for the numerator is 10. The degrees of freedom for the denominator is eight. And our F statistic is 4.5. Let's go to Excel. Here in Excel, I've copied the data that we just calculated that F is 4.5, the numerator has 10 degrees of freedom, and the denominator has eight degrees of freedom. Remember, we're doing a right-tailed test. So do a right-tailed test. We'll type equals f dot dist dot rt for the right tail. Open a parenthesis. 4.5 is my test statistic. The numerator has 10 degrees of freedom. The denominator has 8 degrees of freedom. And we end up with our p-value of 0 0.022 when we round. Our shaded area, our p-value is 0 0.022. That is our p-value. That means there's about 2% evidence in support of the null hypothesis. And alpha, our claim, is at the 0 0.05, meaning we will still believe the null hypothesis all the way down to 5%. But when it's less than 5%, like our p-value of 2%, we will choose to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative so we can claim that the pipe bowls made out of clay do seem to have a greater variance in their di diameter than those made out of stone. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you as you look at conducting a hypothesis test to compare two variances using this new distribution, the F-test.